Welcome to another episode of Learn from People Who Lived It. My name is Stephanie Keener. I'm actually just turned 30 on the 7th. What story are you here to share? Just my journey through a lot of the trauma that I've gone through in my life and how I'm working to heal. Who do you hope hears this? Um, anyone who feels alone. Stephanie joins us for another episode of Learn from People Who Lived It. And as usual, Dr. Frank Bavacqua along for the ride as well. Good evening to you, sir. Hello. Um, You and I mentioned before we got on with uh, Stephanie today that it's like any one of these things that has gone on in your life, Stephanie, could be enough for a lifetime, right? There's a lot here. There's a lot of uh, stuff with your dad. Um, as I understand it, there's a moment where you drive him out with a shotgun. Like, we're talking about, you know, some really volatile moments, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, right. So, um, every podcast, we like to begin with this zero to 10 lens. It gives us a good idea about your upbringing, uh, things that are true about you. So, let's jump right into that right now. Um, Stephanie, what is your life like from zero to 10? Give us a, an idea of that brother, sisters, mom, dad dynamics. So, a little bit of the beginning when I was about a year old, actually, when I was conceived, we'll start there. Okay. <laughs> when I was conceived, um, my mother at the time was 18, and my biological father, who I understand his name is Jason. Um, she was 18, he was 17. And when she tried to tell him that, uh, she was pregnant, his father, my biological grandfather told her that, uh, he would accuse her of statutory rape and take her to court if she ever came back. So I've never, never met my biological father, but, um, hence my dad, if that's what we want to call him. Uh, stepped in and said that he would put his name on my birth certificate and take care of me. Well, at about a year old, I guess he kidnapped me, um, took me across state lines and filed for full custody um, and made it to where my mom couldn't show up to court. So he automatically got full custody. Um, And then from that point on, there was just a lot of moving around. My dad was a known drug addict and we never stayed in any place like too long i would say probably the longest would be about a year at the most so when you take a look back at your childhood uh, what are your descriptions of it you know some people say oh i love my childhood I look back it was amazing what words do you use to describe your childhood unstable um, very, very unstable um, and very, very abusive. My father was also a very violent man. What does that mean? What does that mean exactly? It, you know, it, it didn't stop with beating me at home. It was, he was stealing from my grandparents. He would fight anybody in my family. Like if we were out in public, if anybody even looked at him wrong, it was an instant fight. Like it was just a very, he was a very, very angry person. I'm bringing the doctor right away, Dr. Frank Bavacqua. I can only imagine what's going on in your head right now about, and this is why we have this podcast, right? Just stop, hit the pause in these moments and explore them a little bit more, maybe with more of a psychological lens. What's this doing to a child? She's coming up in this environment. What's happening to her? I mean, I'll ask you the same question in a moment, Stephanie, but what's happening here, Frank? Steph, correct me if I'm wrong. You you didn't you may have felt like something was off or wrong, but you didn't know any different. Uh, it sort of normalizes that maybe this is how people act. This is how people deal with conflict. Maybe looking back now, 20, 30 years later, it it obviously seems off and wrong and terrible. Uh, and it probably felt terrible at the time, but it normalizes a lot of stuff. And so a lot of times we find ourselves repeating those patterns later because that's what we're used to. Some of that ring true with you? Oh, absolutely. Um, but yeah, growing up, I was very, very angry. Um, I got in trouble a lot at school. Let's see. There was a lot of fights that I would get into. Um, I mean, even moving out after, I I was known for like punching holes in doors. And it was just, it was very bad. I was a very angry person myself. We have three goals with learn from people who lived it. One. 
to help you feel less alone. Two, encourage you to seek out a coach, a therapist, a church, anyone who can help you get through your journey and find some healing. Three, when you're ready, share your story with us.